right. So Sindel was on the screen, I'm sorry, my bad. I just objectified someone. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, moving on. So uh let's talk about Raiden. 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 And I say that because in the original Mortal Kombat, it was spelled with a Y. Not an I. I before E except after C. Anyway, uh this is his biography, Champion of Earth Realm. Uh, in the village of Feng Jian, Raiden was known for his kindness and his charity. He was happy to spend his days tending to the fields, as well as to his friends and family. Uh, so when he is asked to leave Feng Jian and become one of Earthrealm's champions, Raiden hesitates, but he soon realizes that to best serve his village, he must join them. As threats to Earth Earthrealm mount, Raiden must mature into the great warrior that Liu Kang knows he can be. So. I don't think so much that Raiden is the greatest warrior, but he is a true champion, right? And I think this is why and how we're going to see Raiden end up becoming the protector of Earthrealm. Not because he's the greatest warrior, but because his heart, as he references in, in the very first sort of gameplay reveal, um, he's, he's, his strength is, is there. That is Raiden's strength through and through, right? It's not about who can hit hardest, who, who, who the greatest fighter is. This is about whether or not this person is able to take care of Earthrealm, to guide people to the destinies and, and whatnot that they, you know, should be at. And that's why Raiden is always, you know, he's such a beloved character. Because, you know, um, you know, it's... That's that's the way it is. Like that's that's how good, um, you know, that's how good Raiden is, right? So that's why, um, that's why uh, I believe that this game we're going to show it's going to really show us how he becomes the champion in the way that I think will happen, and that will be because Liu Kang's falling apart. Liu Kang thought that he could create this utopia. Now, he did merge with his Revenant self, as people have said to me before, so maybe that's sort of having more of an influence than his normal self. Um, but either way, I think it's going to be fairly obvious that uh, Lou is not going to be able to do this, that the more and more that time goes on, everything is just falling apart because he tried to micromanage everything instead of simply just doing what um, you know, God would do and just go, well, everyone's got free will and we just have to deal with it. You know, if you start taking away free will of one person, a singular person out there, then they are a slave and then that is not a good God, right? Free will sucks because bad people get away with things, but unfortunately, because of that, um, you know, times and life can be hard, but there's the flip side too. Okay, we have full freedom to do good things as well. And that's why there's always that balance. Now, I think that that's like, um, I don't know how he gets the amulet, because you can see the amulet on his belt there. Um, maybe someone knows. But, um, and I don't know if that's the source of his power or it's simply just, uh, you know, you know, just like an elder god thing that he has, right? <clears throat> but he's going to be beyond a champion of Earthrealm. He is going to be the elder god that protects Earthrealm. Liu Kang, and at some point they're probably going to fight, like they have in the past, right? Uh, as somebody made a comment to me just before, actually, in one of my recent videos, that uh, this is why Raiden ended up becoming Dark Raiden. Because he started to try and micromanage everything and go, oh, we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that. And then he started getting really down and, and melancholy about the way humanity is and things like that. And that's where you actually start to fall apart. When you accept that, that the physical self is just but, you know, a stepping stone to the next step in our existence... It's the soul that matters. 
We're playing a video game where Shang Tsung literally takes people's souls. Right? Literally taking their souls. Right? Um, and so, because of that, um, you know, that's the most important part. A soul is what defines us. You could, you could clone us to the, to the absolute minuscule, you know, um, micron or whatever, right? And, but it will be a completely different person. Their soul will be completely different, right? The soul is uncopyable. You, you, you cannot duplicate it, right? That's why losing your soul in Mortal Kombat is such a massive thing because somebody has taken, they've taken you. It is the worst form of kidnapping, soul napping, right? So that's why, that's why it's so important that, you know, um, you do the best you can to guide people. You can't force people to do anything. You have to sort of show people all the doors and go, which one do you choose to walk through? I think that's why Raiden has always been such the, the best protector of Earthrealm in terms of like like an elder god, because um, just like how Raiden views his village, Feng Jian, he also he will then encompass the entire realm of Earth as his village. He will be that powerful and that sort of like godly that. You know, taking care of the entire realm will be just as easy as him being there taking care of his village. And he will see humanity as just an extension of his village. Right? And I think that's I think that's very exciting. I'm hoping this is the way it's gonna go, but it seems everything like this and everything else we've seen seems to point in that direction. Um and I think that's what I think that's why he is the best protector and, and elder god for Earthrealm, because of that, because of the very uh, nature of who Raiden is and what's in his heart. Um, I think Liu Kang. Sometimes I don't really like how they sort of portrayed Liu Kang. I think I preferred him in earlier games to a degree. Uh, somebody left a comment before saying they never really liked him at all. Um, I always thought Liu Kang was the champion of Earthrealm, not so much that he had to become an Elder God. Because obviously, and this is the thing though, is that, you know, he obviously cannot handle being an Elder God. You know, he's making his enemies sick and weakly, he's taking away their agency of life and their quality of life already, without even their choice. So that's instantly a big no-no, Raiden never did that, uh, as a baseline. So, you know, it's very, um, yeah, it, it's, I, I, I like, I, was, I know I did the video and I still leave it up there because it's a reference point because I still kind of, I still would kind of like an answer from Ed Boon or Netherrealm in general, why they race swapped Raiden from who he was to how, how he looks now. Um, I don't care if the law reason is because Raiden, you know, you know, there was the fear that Raiden would become, again, Dark Raiden, and he had to be humbled. And so thereby, being raised in this particular village would ground him to become an uncorruptible Elder God and a great protector of Earthrealm. But I need that story, do you know what I mean? Like, I need that storyline-wise. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't just race swap people or change the sexes or whatever and go, oh, well, it's the way it is. You're a piece of garbage if you don't like it. No, I need reasons. I love the story. I love the lore. I don't give a crap about combos. I care about the story of Mortal Kombat because it was the first fighting game that got me into fighting games and story. Not Street Fighter. Not King of Fighters. Not anything else. The storyline of Mortal Kombat was out of this world. It was next level. Right? And John Tobias did that. He, he knew that... You know, it's got to be more than just blood and guts and, and fisticuffs. It's got to be, how do you get people hooked in and caring about these characters and seeing where they end up, right? There's a, there's a comic book series that came out in the 90s, uh, Raiden and Kano. 
where uh, Raiden tries to get Kano to essentially become good. Like, he says, look, you can do these good things, and it doesn't work. <laughs> but he tries over three issues. Uh, but it was great. It was really cool. You're taking literally two polar opposites and putting them together. And, uh, and watching Kano be like, man, do I really have to do this crap? You know, like, I just want to stab someone. Can't I just stab someone? No. You're good. So, you know, that was kind of cool. So, um, I'm very curious about the path moving forward with Raiden. Very curious, and I think that may end up being the case. I don't, again, I don't know 100%, but I think that's going to end up being the case where... Liu Kang, you know, realizes he can't do this and he literally hands over his elder godness to Raiden. Right? Uh, he might even give up his firepower. Who knows? I don't know. Because um, obviously, like, if he gives that up, yeah, he could still, um, you know, he, he could still, um, what do you call it? You know, you could still, as Liu Kang, he could still have fire powers. Um, but it might humble him. In this process, Liu Kang might become humbled, realizing that he's made so many mistakes when he thought he was trying to fix everything, and therefore ends up in the kerfuffle that he does. And Raiden's like, well, you know, or pure heart, he's like, well, you know, or, or however it goes, I don't know. But I think it's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Catch you next time.